Here's everything that happened in Rebooted MCU Phase 3. Project 1 is Captain America Civil War and it takes place in Universe 2015. Cap and the Avengers are on a mission to track down a mysterious new threat known as the Winter Soldier, who is later revealed to be Bucky Barnes, played by Sebastian Stan. While pursuing the Winter Soldier, Vision accidentally destroys the building, killing many people in the process. As a result, Thunderbolt Ross presents the Avengers with a Sokovia Accords, which would place the Avengers under the direct control of the government. This causes a split between the group, with Cap standing against the Accords while Stark supports them. Cap eventually discovers that the Winter Soldier has been brainwashed by Baron Zemo, played by Daniel Brühl, while attending a funeral for Peggy. Cap's aid of the Winter Soldier eventually leads to a showdown between Team Cap and Team Iron Man. The rift caused by the Sokovia Accords has broken into an all-out brawl. This sees Team Cap featuring Captain America, Bucky Barnes, Hawkeye, Ant-Man, and Wasp facing off against Team Iron Man featuring Iron Man, War Machine, Black Widow, Black Panther, and Spider-Man. Vision remains neutral but injures War Machine in the battle while attempting to prevent Cap and Bucky from escaping. The ending sees Hawkeye, Ant-Man, and Wasp get arrested. Cap and Tony fight after it is discovered that Bucky killed Stark's parents. Black Panther prevents Zemo from killing himself and Cap surrenders his shield to Tony. post credit scenes show Wolfgang, Baron Von Strucker meeting with Dreykov to discuss the Black Widow program and in the second we see Cap and T'Challa in Wakanda as Bucky undergoes treatment to heal from the Winter Soldier program. Project number two is Doctor Strange, and it takes place in Universe 2015. This movie stays relatively the same, but let's run through it. Brilliant neurosurgeon Stephen Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, loses the ability to fully use his hands following a bad car crash. He hears about a man who suffered a similar fate, but learned to reuse his hands by traveling to a place called Kamartaj. Strange eventually finds his way to Kamartaj and meets the Ancient One, played by Tilda Swinton, the current Sorcerer Supreme, along with the Kamartaj librarian Wong, played by Benedict Wong, and Baron Mordo, played by Chiwetel Ojafor. Strange learns the powers of the mystic arts and is chosen by the Ancient One to be her successor after he manages to protect the New York Sanctum from an attack by disgruntled former pupils of the Ancient One, obtaining the Cloak of Levitation in the process. Enraged by this revelation, Baron Mordo kills the Ancient One for choosing Strange over him and unleashes Gargantos from the Dark Dimension. This causes Strange to use the Eye of Agamotto, which holds the Time Stone in order to defeat the duo. Gargantos kills Mordo but returns to the Dark Dimension following the battle with Strange, who fully assumes the role of Sorcerer Supreme. Project number three is Spider-Man Blind Spot, and it takes place in Universe 2016. An unknown man has hired Jonathan Powers, aka The Jester, played by Barry Cogan, and Martin Lee, aka Mr. Negative, played by Ludi Lin, in order to help smuggle drugs across New York, an operation that has been greatly impacted by a masked vigilante. Peter and his aunt find themselves in legal trouble as the two are getting evicted from their apartment, as rent has skyrocketed. As a result, Aunt May seeks legal counsel from Matt Murdock, played by Charlie Cox, Foggy Nelson, played by Eldon Henson, and Karen Page, played by Deborah Ann Wolf. In the process, Spider-Man and Matt Murdock's alter ego Daredevil are forced to team up when the duo encounter Herman Schultz, aka Shocker, played by Bokeem Woodbine, who's involved with the drug smuggling operation. This leads to the discovery that the rent increase has been caused by Martin Lee opening up Feast, an organization that is supposed to provide services to the less fortunate, but has caused prices to soar in the surrounding area. Spider-Man and Daredevil return to Feast that evening, but are overtaken by the combined forces of Shocker, Mr. Negative, and Jester. Feeling defeated, Peter begs Stark for help, but to no avail, causing Peter to visit Uncle Ben's grave for support. The words of his late uncle echo in his mind as Peter is reminded what comes with great power. That night, Daredevil and a reinvigorated Spider-Man attempt to stop the operation before a large large amount of drugs are able to be shipped across New York. In the end, Spider-Man and Daredevil are victorious, Mr. Negative and Shocker are arrested, and Jester escapes to reveal what happened to his boss. This is when we meet the man behind the entire operation, Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who strangles Jester to death for failing him. The ending reveals that Stark purchased Peter's apartment complex, creating a new rent-free facility, while Matt tells Peter that he will work alone for now, but will need his help once again when he finds out more information on Fisk. Post credit scene shows Spider Man getting an upgraded suit from Happy Hogan, and the second scene shows Thunderbolt Ross meeting with the leader. Project number four is Black Panther, and it takes place in Universe 2016. After King T'Challa successfully defends his title from M'Baku, played by Winston Duke, he learns that Wakandan artifacts are being sold on the black market. This causes Black Panther Rakoye, played by Denai Guerrera, and Nakia, played by Lupita Nyongo, to travel to Korea in order to recover the artifacts, and in the process, rescue a man who saved Nakia from being attacked and discover another man who seems to know a lot about Wakandan history. Bringing the injured man back to Wakanda, he is revealed to be FBI agent Everett Ross, played by Martin Freeman, who is tracking down the man in the casino known as Ulysses Claw, played by Ralph Fiennes, who has been involved in heists for Wakandan artifacts. In spite of this, Queen Ramonda, played by Angela Bassett, voices frustration to T'Challa, saying that she does not trust outsiders. 
Discouraged, T'Challa meets with Namor, played by Raul Castillo, to discuss the issue, while Claw secretly plans to invade Wakanda with his group of mercenaries in order to obtain Vibranium. Claw reveals that his great-grandfather was killed after attempting to take Vibranium from Wakanda, and as revenge, Claw will seek to use a chunk of Vibranium he smuggled from Sokovia following Ultron's attack to lay siege on Wakanda using his Sonic Converter. Using the knowledge he has gathered from documents and extensive research, Claw locates Wakanda along with his mercenaries and launches an all-out attack. This causes the force of Wakanda along with M'Baku and Namor to fight the mercenaries while T'Challa faces Claw. In the end, Claw is defeated and T'Challa makes a commitment to show that Wakanda must begin to trust outsiders. The first post credit scene shows T'Challa speaking at the United Nations, announcing outreach programs to help Wakanda better impact the world. And the second post credit scene shows Winter Soldier getting his arm from Shuri. Project number 5 is Fantastic Four Negative Zone and it takes place in Universe 2016. The Fantastic Four finally managed to launch themselves into space, building a spaceship out of the repurposed vibranium they received from Wakanda. Their trip is cut short, however, when they are arrested by the Nova Corps and taken to Xandar. Here the team agrees to help out Nova Prime, played by Glenn Close, by taking the Nova One into a part of the galaxy known as the Negative Zone, in order to recover the Power Stone from the leader of the Annihilation Wave, a Nihilist, played by Andy Serkis. This mission is beneficial for both sides, as it will allow the Fantastic Four to study the cosmic rays on a more advanced ship and allow the Nova Corps to recover an Infinity Stone. Unbeknownst to both the Fantastic Four and the Nova Corps, a, a different group is also attempting to recover the Power Stone. This group consists of the Children of Thanos, Gamora, played by Zoe Saldana, Nebula, played by Karen Gillan, and Ronan the Accuser, played by Lee Pace. When both groups arrive, they are easily dispatched by a Nihilist who captures Reed, Sue, Johnny, Nebula, and Ronan. Annihilus reveals that he only took control of the Power Stone in order to protect it from Nebula and Ronan's father, who is beginning to take step towards collecting all six Infinity Stones. Annihilus eventually moves the group towards a Colosseum, where they will be executed, but the event is interrupted by Ben and Gamora, who have teamed up to save their families. In the process of the battle, Gamora allows Ben to take the Power Stone and the Fantastic Four escape, but are not able to study the Cosmic Rays. Ben begins to accept his powers, and the team agree to work towards using their power to help others instead of trying to find a cure. The power Stone is given to Nova Prime, who upgraded the team's ship while they were away on their mission, and allows the Fantastic Four to embark on space exploration. The post credit scene shows Annihilus with the Cosmic Control Rod and Ronan telling Thanos about the Power Stone being taken to Xandar. Project number 6 is Thor Ragnarok, and it takes place in Universe 2016. This movie stays most of the same with one big change. Thor fights Surtur, Odin dies, Hela returns and destroys Mjolnir, and Thor and Loki end up on Sakaar. Here we meet Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson, the Grandmaster, played by Jeff Goldblum, and Korg, voiced by Josh Gad. Thor is forced to fight the Grandmaster's champion, Drax the Destroyer, played by Dave Bautista, who is incredibly powerful, and defeats Thor with help from the Grandmaster. Back on Asgard, Hela has killed Thor's allies and is attempting to take over Asgard, which results in Thor, Loki, Valkyrie, and Drax joining forces to stop her. They fight Hela, but Thor is forced to use Surtur to destroy Asgard and loses his eye in the process, as the remaining Asgardians escape on the Statesman. And in the post credit scene, the Nova Corps arrives to arrest Drax, but instead agrees to drop all charges against him if he agrees to go to Xandar and serve as a security guard. Project number 7 is Hulk Duality, and it takes place in Universe 2017. We see Bruce Banner, played by Mark Ruffalo, continue to struggle with his Hulk identity, not being able to control his transformation following the events of the Enchantress. Things change as Nick Fury and Thunderbolt Ross race to find Banner, escalating when Ross sends War Machine to fight Banner, pursuant to the Sokovia Accords. War Machine defeats Banner, who does not have access to his complete power due to a mental block, but allows Nick Fury to bring him to a remote S.H.I.E.L.D. facility in the Atlantic, where Banner is introduced to Leonard Sampson, played by James McAvoy, a psychologist who attempts to help Banner overcome his mental block. This is where we learn more about Bruce's childhood, specifically his abusive father. This session with Samson leads Bruce to request to be taken to Culver University, a request that Fury agrees to. Unbeknownst to the group, Ross has been working with Samuel Stearns, aka the leader played by Tim Blake Nelson, to create a weapon to defeat the Hulk, the weapon in question being a giant sonic converter, which is used on the Hulk when he attempts to visit Betty Ross, played by Liv Tyler. The leader ultimately betrays Ross, attacking him in an attempt to get revenge on Bruce. Following some encouragement from Samson, Bruce is able to get past his mental block, transforming into the Hulk and defeating the leader, saving the day in the process. In the end, Fury introduces Hulk to Doctor Strange, who might have to work with him to cover up the Gargantos incident, and Strange allows Hulk to stay with him and continue his therapy sessions with Samson. The post credit scene shows Bruce reuniting with his cousin Jennifer Walters, played by Tatiana Maslany, and Ross contemplating using a vial of Bruce's blood on himself. 
Project number eight is Black Widow, and it takes place in Universe 2017. Black Widow's on the run from Thunderbolt Ross following her betrayal during the events of Captain America Civil War. Natasha is informed by Nick Fury that Dracov, played by Ray Winstone, and Baron Wolfgang von Strucker, played by Thomas Kretschmann, are working together. But if Natasha could find a way to defeat them both, Hydra would be destroyed. In the process of hunting them down, Natasha re-encounters her childhood family. Yelena Belova, played by Florence Pugh, Alexei Shostakov, a.k.a. Red Guardian, played by David Harbour, and Melina Shostakov, played by Rachel Taylor. Taylor. Most of the Black Widow movie stays the same, except Black Widow and Hawkeye never participate in the infamous Budapest situation, and Dracov has turned his daughter into the most impressive and skilled fighter he has ever overseen. She holds the code name of Taskmaster, played by Rachel Taylor. Natasha beats Strucker, Yelena beats Dracov, and Red Guardian beats Taskmaster. Both Strucker and Dracov are both killed in their ship after it detonates, marking the official end of Hydra and rebooted MCU. Yelena, Red Guardian, Melina, and Taskmaster all escape together while Natasha sets her sights on mending things with her found family of Avengers. In the post credit scene, we see Natasha reunite with Cap, who tells her that Vision is in trouble. Project number 9 is Avengers Infinity War, and it takes place in Universe 2018. This movie follows Thanos, played by Josh Brolin, seeking to capture the Infinity Stones in order to wipe out half the universe to prevent hunger and depletion of resources. So, to recap, the Parasol is with the Nova Corps, who Thanos defeats first, he kills Nova Prime, defeats Drax in battle, and leaves only a single member of the Nova Corps alive. Richard Ryder, played by Glenn Powell. The Space Stone is with the Asgardians, who Thanos defeats second, killing Loki and Heimdall and embarrassing Thor in battle. Before he dies, Heimdall sends a message to Earth, warning them of Thanos, and causes the heroes of Earth, including Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Wong, and Hulk to become active. This results in the Black Order attacking Earth. Spider-Man and Iron Man head to space to follow Ebony Maw, who's captured Doctor Strange. The Fantastic Four respond to a distress call in space, meeting Thor, Drax, and Richard Ryder in the process as the group splits up, with the Fantastic Four heading to Titan, and Thor, Drax, and Ryder heading to get a new weapon for Thor. The Reality Stone is with the Collector, which is the third stone gotten by Thanos. In the process, Gamora and Nebula and Ronan attempt to stop him, but Thanos captures Gamora and expresses his disgust for Nebula and Ronan. On Earth, Captain America and Black Widow prepare to save Vision by bringing him to Wakanda along with War Machine and Hulk. The Soul Stone is on Vormir and requires the person seeking the stone to trade a soul for the stone. Thanos trades Gamora in order to obtain the Soul Stone, and heads back to Titan. On Titan, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange strategize with the Fantastic Four about how to defeat Thanos, while the heroes on Earth team up with the Wakandans and Namor in order to hold off the Black Order from capturing the Mind Stone. In the midst of the battle, Thor, Drax, Nova arrive with Thor wielding Stormbreaker, his new weapon that he hopes will defeat Thanos. Thanos arrives on Titan, defeats our heroes, and Strange gives Thanos the Time Stone in exchange for Stark's life. Thanos then arrives on Earth, defeating the forces of Earth and killing Vision in order to obtain the Mind Stone. Thanos snaps his fingers and we watch people turn to dust. The heroes who remain after the snap are Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Black Widow, Johnny Storm, and Nebula. In the post credit scene, we see Fury turn to dust, but not before using a mysterious device to call for help. Project number 10 is Ant-Man and the Wasp Microverse, and it takes place in Universe 2018. Hank and Janet have been placed on house arrest as part of their plea deal following the events of Captain America Civil War. They are being checked in on by Jimmy Woo, played by Randall Park, and Pym Technologies is being run by Eric O'Grady, played by Dan Stevens. While on house arrest, Pym builds a Microverse entry point, a machine which will allow people to enter the Microverse in order to gather quantum energy which Pym believes will be a new source of energy capable of helping the planet. Word spreads to new AIM boss Lyle Getz, played by John Glazer, and black market dealer Sonny Birch, played by Walter Goggins, who hires the two people who came up with the idea for the Microverse Launcher Point to begin with, Dr. Elias Egghead Starr, played by Rain Wilson, and Dr. Bill Foster, played by Keith David, to steal the machine. The duo repurposes a Yellow Jacket suit, allowing Foster to become the villain Goliath, and steal the Microversal Entry Point from Hank and Janet. With the help from Eric, Hank and Janet are able to track down Star and Foster without causing Wu to become suspicious. Hank learns that Star's daughter, Ava Star, aka Ghost, played by Hannah John Kamen, suffers from quantum phasing as a result of an accident she was caught in as a child. Seeking to help Ava, Hank and Janet travel to the Microverse, collect some quantum energy, and uses to help Ava. Before returning home, Hank promises Elias that he will help cure Ava's quantum phasing. As Elias, Foster, Getz, and Birch are arrested, and Hank and Janet complete their house arrest. In the post credit scene, we see Hank and Janet get trapped in the microverse, as Eric and Hannah are dusted by Thanos. Project number 11 is Captain Marvel, and it takes place in Universe 1990. This project introduces Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, played by Natalie Dormer, who is working with the Kree, Jan Rog, played by Jude Law, in their fight against the Skrulls, but finds herself on Earth in the course of a mission where she meets Nick Fury and Phil Coulson. Carol learns of her former life. Her best friend, Maria Rambo, played by Lashana Lynch, 
how she supposedly died in a plane crash. Carol not only realizes that she's been manipulated by the Kree, but she is informed by the Skrull Talos but by Ben Mendelsohn that the Kree have obtained the Power Stone and are attempting to use it on the Skrull home of Skrullos. Captain Marvel, Fury, and Talos travel to space in order to fight the Kree, resulting in Carol removing her inhibitor and unleashing her full power to defeat the Supreme Intelligence played by Helen Mirren. The day is saved and the Power Stone is moved to be kept with the Brood, an alien species that are allies of the Skrull. The defeated Kree are visited by Thanos, who is disappointed in the Kree's failure to deliver the Infinity Stone. But instead, he is offered a young Kree named Ronan in repentance for their failure. Thanos decides to hold off on his mission to gather the Infinity Stones for now, and Captain Marvel returns to space to protect other planets around the galaxy. In the post credit scenes, we see Annihilus, closer to present day, recover the Power Stone from the Brood, and Captain Marvel arrive on Earth following the snap. Project number 12 is Avengers Endgame, and it takes place in Universe 2021. After the Avengers attempt to recover the stones, finding out that they have been atomized by Thanos, we have a three-year time jump to the year 2021, where Ammon and the Wasp are freed from the Microverse thanks to a rat. Hank and Janet track down Steve, Natasha, and the other remnants of the Avengers in order to discuss a way to revive their friends. Meeting with Stark, Pym raised an idea of time travel, and after Stark does some research, he agrees to help with the mission. The team recruits the heroes who survived the snap, including Hawkeye, who has assumed the Ronin persona, and a plan is formed to recover the stones. Hulk travels to the Battle of New York to recover the Mind Stone, ultimately getting it from the Ancient One and promising to return it after their mission is complete. Tony and Cap travel to the events of Age of Ultron in order to capture the Mind Stone from Strucker. Thor, Natasha, and Clint travel to Asgard shortly after the events of Rampage of the Hulk in order to recover both the Space Stone and the Reality Stone before Heimdall brings it to the Collector. In the process, Thor also regains Mjolnir. Hank, Janet, Johnny, and Nebula travel back to recover the Power and Soul Stone. Johnny and Nebula travel to the Negative Zone to recover the Power Stone, while Janet and Hank travel to Vormir, with Hank sacrificing himself in order for the group to recover the Soul Stone. While at the Negative Zone, Nebula, Gamora, and Ronan from 2016 inform Thanos of their discovery, and Thanos prepares his group to travel to the present. As all of our heroes arrive in the present, Janet shares the loss of Hank, and Hulk snaps the Infinity Gauntlet, bringing back all of our heroes as 2016 Thanos arrives and lays siege on the Avengers compound. We then watch as the heroes struggle against Thanos, with Black Widow dying in an attempt to protect Clint while he escapes a destroyed compound with the Infinity Gauntlet, Thor, Cap, and Iron Man face off against Thanos, and while things look dire, things change when Strange transports all of the snapped heroes along with reinforcements to the battlefield. Captain Marvel returns to the fight as well, we watch Stark use the Infinity Gauntlet to snap away Thanos and all his men except 2016 Gamora, who is defected from her father. In the process, Stark dies from the snap. The movie ends with Stark's funeral and Hulk returning all the Infinity Stones along with Mjolnir, which was taken from Asgard, to their rightful timelines. And as for what happened with all the characters, that will be covered in the Phase 4 recap. Project number 13 is Daredevil the Man Without Fear, and it takes place in Universe 2021. We follow the exploits of Matt Murdock, who was snapped away during the events of Infinity War to find a New York much different than when he left it. Wilson Fisk has been elected mayor, and in an attempt to continue to enact curfew ordinances, he has been paying vigilantes to cause chaos, taking advantage of the fear caused by the snap. This causes Daredevil to encounter a man known as the Punisher, played by John Bernthal, who is attempting to fight against the Hand, led by Elektra, played by Elodie Young. In the process, Matt also encounters Jessica Jones, played by Kirsten Ritter, and Luke Cage, played by Mike Coulter, who have attempted to keep crime under control in Daredevil's absence. Daredevil reluctantly agrees to temporarily work with Luke and Jessica, uncovering Fisk's scheme to enact curfew to allow for his illegal drug smuggling operation to prosper, and encounters the man known as Bullseye, played by Wilson Bethel in the process. Ending the trio preventing Bullseye from escalating a conflict between the Hand and Punisher. Daredevil defeats Bullseye and encounters Fisk for the first time. Punisher is arrested, and the city council votes to end Fisk's mandatory curfew, reasoning that the city can't continue to live in fear following the snap. The ending shows Matt reuniting with Peter in the post credit scene, we see Elektra get dismissed by the Hand. And that does it for Phase 3. I know this episode was a bit long, but that's what happens when you have 13 projects. Anyways, that does it for Saga 1, the Infinity Saga of Rebooted MCU. The next episode will be the start of Saga 2, the Galaxy and Mutant Saga. Until then, this has been JT. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in Phase 4.